One way to understand an old evolution is simply to go outside today, watching what they do, learning about their biology, how one species differs from another. But that's just a snapshot of an old history. Many parts of the anole story took place in the distant past. To understand that history, we need different kinds of evidence. One possibility is to look at the fossils. We care about the fossil record because you can think about present anolis diversity as a patchwork. We can't truly really understand what present day diversity is without understanding the lineages that we lost to get to where we are today. What we know about anoles is that they evolved about 60 million years ago. This almost surely happened somewhere in Central or South America. Shortly after they evolved, one colonizing species managed to get to an island in the Caribbean. The Caribbean is very heterogeneous geologically, meaning that the islands are um, composed of different rock substrates. Some of them are uplifted coral reef, some of them are volcanic in origin. The Greater Antilles have been around at least since the Eocene, somewhere around 40 million years ago. And all of the species in the Greater Antilles are descendants of this one ancestral colonist that got there maybe 40 million years ago. I think one of the coolest discoveries that's been made with anoles goes back to the amber anoles. Amber is a really, really pretty uh, color. Usually it's like a honey color. and when you start looking at it more closely, you start to see um, that there's, there's something in this rock. What is it? Sometimes you'll even see bits of skin and scales preserved in amber. Um, so you have these scales of an organism that lived 20 million years ago, preserved beautifully. Anoles had already diversified a lot by that time. And in fact, that's what these amber fossils show. We have at least I think four different ecomorphs from, from that period, maybe 15 to 20 million years ago. It's amazing to look at these amber specimens and to realize that 20 million years ago, the ecomorphs had already originated. Unfortunately, fossils of Caribbean anoles are incredibly rare. But there are some more recent fossils. We call them subfossils. And here in my lab, Melissa Kemp is studying them. What I'm trying to learn is how species ranges have changed over the past 20,000 years. So if we find anoles in a forested area today, if we were to go back 20,000 years ago to a cave in that area, will we find the same species of anoles or is it a completely different community? The fossils that we are finding are not whole skeletons, they're usually um, bone fragments. I really enjoy piecing it back together because it's like putting a puzzle together. Uh, we have all this material that no one has seen because it's been in the ground for thousands of years and we're the first to unearth it. We identify the specimens that we find um, when they're so fragmentary by going back into the lab and using museum collections. We can compare the skeletons of those modern day species to the skeletons of those fossils and see if they are the same but also we pay attention to any differences that we see that might indicate that we have a new species or an extinct species. The fossil record is indispensable if you want to understand ancient communities of anoles or the ancient geography of anole distributions. But the fossil record is also very incomplete. Fortunately, there's another place we can look for clues to their history, and that's the DNA that living anoles carry inside their cells. If you're interested in the evolution of a group of species over a long period of time, it's vital that you know what their evolutionary tree is, the history of, of branching relationships between those species. So a good way to think of an evolutionary tree is to think of how an actual tree grows. As you go forward in time, it's like going up the trunk of a tree, then you'll have, you'll have a branching event. And that's, that's what happens when one species gives rise to two species. It's a speciation event. For any group of organisms, there is a real evolutionary tree. There is one history that actually happened. The problem is we weren't there to observe it. And so we have to act like detectives, looking at species that are alive today, and we're reconstructing this branching history back through time. 
you need to first go and collect your samples. The genetic information of all organisms, including anoles, is contained in the sequence of nucleotides that reside within their DNA. You take the samples into the lab and you extract the DNA to determine its sequence. All else being equal, the more time that's passed since two species that are around today split from one another, the more different their DNA should be. So by looking at the evolutionary differences and the similarities among all of these organisms, we can begin to reconstruct this evolutionary history, the history of branching in this evolutionary tree. Biologists employ the same basic technique, using DNA sequences to reconstruct evolutionary history, to understand both the relationships within a single genus, as well as the evolution of major animal groups over hundreds of millions of years. I am a systematic biologist, which is a person who that's what they do. They try to figure out what the different species are and how they're related to each other. For me, maybe it's an end in itself to have this evolutionary tree, but for the big picture of an old biology, it's just the beginning, right? Because now other people who are studying other aspects of an old evolution can use that tree as the context for asking other questions. To solve the riddle of an old ecomorphs, knowing the evolutionary tree of an old was critical. The pattern we observe is that anoles with extremely similar traits occupy the same habitats on different islands. Without an evolutionary tree, we can't be sure whether all the members of an ecomorph are close relatives or whether they evolved independently on each island. The evolutionary tree clearly shows that members of the same ecomorph on different islands are not closely related. And that means that the anole ecomorphs evolved independently on each island. But there's another big question, and that is how do new species arise? How does one ancestral species give rise to two descendant species? That's a major part of what we're working on right now.